Let's see if we can get this lined up. There we are. Can we see it? Yep, looks good. All right, folks, welcome to the live stream. Um, I'm guessing nobody is on yet, but you'll get started in a bit. You can always go back to the start. Wait, it's already the start, so you'll know that already. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us, whether it be live or in the, in the future when it's uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to start the epoxy resin river table pour. It's eventually going to get uh, end up in the van as my kitchen countertop and work surface. So, um, yeah, why don't we get started? And uh, feel free to, uh, to send in some questions and things. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see them from here popping up on my phone, but I'll move in closer every now and then to see if we get anything. Um, here we go. Right, first things first is uh, safety gloves, because as you'll see, this stuff, this is what I'm using, and it's from Easy Composites. This is the glass cast 1050 casting resin, so it's not going to give a perfect top layer, uh, but what it will do is it, I can pour it much thicker than what you would if you were using something that would give you that top layer, but I'm going to sand it down anyway. So it'll be sanded flush with the level of the wood and then oiled up at the end. Let me just show you the other. So that's the resin, this is the hardener. And um, we'll go through a mix in a minute. And the good thing is, because it's live, if I mess up, y'all get to see it. So uh, before, so these guys, Easy Composites, they do a um, really handy one kilogram set where you just mix both bottles together to get a kilo. Now I don't need as much as the five kilo set that I've got here, but I needed more than a couple of kilos, I believe. So this time I'm actually going to have to mix it myself. So what i got here is I've got some, uh, some paint bucket inners and they're see-through. They can take two litres each, but it means I can see exactly the colour that I'm mixing. Um, and these are by a company called Dial, and you just get a b and I think it was a couple of quid for three. So we've got that. I've got my sister's old measuring jug, which is going to get thrown out afterwards. Thanks, Jess. And um, we should get going. So I can't really bring you down because I lose Wi-Fi. So you're going to have to sit there, but I'll bring things to you. Um, and I don't know if I'm talking too much, but I could explain the whole setup. If anyone wants to, to know about that, leave me a, a comment and I'll get to it. Okay. Get yourself some space at the back here. So the mix ratio by volume is two to one. Two resin to one hardener. But if you do it by weight, it's 100 to 45, which means uh, I think the hardener is slightly heavy. But I'm just going to do it off, um, off volume. So I've got a litre jug. So I'm going to mix up a litre and a half in each one of these. So I'm going to have three litres in total. And I believe that should do the job. Um, and I've also got some of these, which are powders. And if you're going to be able to see, you'll be able to see that probably because of the light. But they're mica powders. Um, this one is very obviously blue. It's called Tropical Temptations from a company called Resonate. And this one is a blue opal magic from Art Ingredients. Mm, finna, finna bar, something like that. But uh, this one actually looks white or clear, but when I got some of it on my fingers, it, it, it was blue. 
and I think this is going to do some cool effects. So we'll see how we get on. Hey, we got people. I wonder if the chat does anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Show live chat messages. Okay, cool. So no one wants to speak to me. That's fine. By the way, Danny Boy's here and he's doing his mathematics homework on the computer just behind the camera. He's trying to be quiet, but if he's not, if he gets angry and starts shouting at the computer, you just have to let him off. And I wrote Danny Boy. Molly's here too. Uh, this stuff's cool, you don't have to wear a mask, uh, like breathing apparatus for this stuff. It's not uh, as potent as some of the other ones. So, like we got taught in chemistry class, I'm going to get down to the level of the measuring thingy. So that's a full litre of resin. You just notice the instructions on the side here. Stop common mistakes. One, not mixing properly. Two, not weighing accurately. And the rest I've got right. So we'll see. If it goes wrong, it's because I haven't done things right. So, here we go. some uh, kitchen roll, just a couple of sheets. She's my uh, lovely assistant. Because our boys are just going to drip everywhere. Cheers. Watch out for that. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Okay. Right, now for 500ml of this guy, which is the harder. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more of this stuff in the future. You'll get notified exactly when I'm doing it if I haven't had a chance to promote it. Right, where are your liters? There's no liters, that works. Just jump straight in there. As far as I know, you don't have to be gentle with it. It's not my strong point. And what I'm going to do actually is get both set up at the same time and try and match the colours to the two so that I don't have a different pore going in on top of another. But we'll find out how effective that is. Got a little bit of solidity forging me here. There you go. So I'm hoping these little thin plastic things have got enough rigidity to um, hold themselves, which they do. Cool, right. Another. Oh, the exciting stuff isn't going to happen for like 10 minutes, by the way. <laughs> but anyways, the colour mixing is pretty exciting. That looks cool. Back up for another litre. I'm 
looks about right. Okay, and then back to 500 of the hardener before we can start throwing in some cool powders and getting some colours out of this guy. Just got it all over my gloves, which is why I'm wearing them. band Hercules Morse are an album release this Friday at the Brook in Southampton. I don't have any sponsors so I might as well put over my friends. So if you guys are in the Southampton area and you fancy listening to some kick butt music, some real dirty rock, then come join us. If someone wants to send me money to advertise stuff, I absolutely will. Right then, let's get some mixing done. One, two. So you're supposed to really get in there and mix it up thoroughly, like scrape the edges and everything of these because if you don't mix it properly, this thing just isn't gonna set right. And it will ruin a lot of hard work. And if you're wondering what kind of cost this entails, I got this piece of wood from a place called Oxford Wood Recycling, and it's um, it's Canadian maple, and it cost me I can't remember. I think it might be like sixty quid, but it's so. Did you did you win? You got um, eight hundred fifty points. Eight hundred fifty points from Danny Boy on athletics. Give it up. Yeah, sixty quid Canadian maple. Um, these two live edges were on the outside, and I. Uh, cut it down the middle, straight down the middle, flipped it round so the live edges are facing each other to form the banks of the river. Um, guys, chill. If you move it, if you make my camera fall over, all these people will be angry at me. Um, the resin, okay, so this five litre set of hardener and resin was like, what was it? I think it was like 65 quid plus that. It's not cheap stuff, plus I've got two litres already in there. So I spent probably over a hundred pounds on resin, 60 quid on the table. There's ply underneath and you'll see why I've got that under there um, when I put it into the van. It's actually gonna stay under there. I'm not taking it off like a lot of people would do. They'd cover it with plastic and pop it off so you just go to the table. This is a storage space. Uh, you can't really see it on the camera, but um, yeah, so the ply was obviously a couple of quid, so close to 200 pounds, including the powders and all that, to get yourself a resin table, but it's going to be worth it. Once I've got these mixed up a little bit, and try and use the muscles and pick up that table and show you what it looks like on camera before I start these pores going. Um, we'll do the colours in a little bit as well. But I want to see, show you what it looks like now. And then if the Wi-Fi holds at the end of the video, I'll show you, I'll run the camera over the pore. OK. 
Okay. Right. Uh, this is going to be a little bit dangerous. I don't know if I should pick this up with these resin tubs here. I'm probably going to knock them all over. But I really want to show you this river table before we start the pour. These two guys can go down here because they're done with. I used the level at the start to make sure that the table was level. It's on the it's on the ground here. Uh, if you don't get it level, of course, it's going to pour over one side of the river and leave a little hole in the other. But as I was leveling, as I was measuring, there were little bits uh, here and there where it would show unlevel and then it would be level again. So who knows what it's going to be like when that pour goes over. Um, okay, people. Can you see that guy? Shiny, right? Blue. See that blue? Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. All right, and that's just about, I think 1.8 centimeters deep. And I got another two centimeters to go. So I used two liters before, so this time I'm gonna use three. Right. So for that first pour, that is just that is just the Resonate Micro Powder Tropical Temptations, and um, I did two separate pours. I did quite a light one first, realised you could still see quite a lot of timber underneath, so I put a darker one in. And as I pushed them in, the dark pushed the light outwards and actually made it look like it was getting deeper in the middle of the river, which is sick. I haven't yet used the Blue Opal Magic. Mica powder. So what I'm going to do, just to see what it's like, is pop a little bit in one, see what happens to it, and then, you know, maybe scrap it completely, or add both of them together, or maybe leave it at this. I don't really know. So here we go. I'll mix it near you, hopefully, so you can see some some action. So this, annoyingly, this is like a salt and pepper shaker. So I can't really control how much goes in. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I might do it over here and try and get Right, the tiniest amount is just going in so I can check if I put that there so you can see a little clearer. Like really, like less pepper than you put on your roast dinner has gone in there. Well, Unless you're my mum, and then it's about half of what you've got on. Okay. I don't really want to see anything on this one. Don't see much happening. We see a big change with the, the, the other powder. Let's throw a bit more in. Let's get adventurous. Oh, yeah, that was a good splash. We'll call that technical measurement one shape. Oh, something's happening. This stuff is cool because it doesn't really like spread like a dye would. It just leaves like tracks and traces. Oh, there's a little glittery shine. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on this. I don't know if you'll see it in the light. Can you see? No, you probably won't see anything. I need to put some more in. But there's like a shimmer going on. I don't know if you'll... No, you'll be able to see. All right, we throw another shake in there for good measure. Yeah, it's real nice, but it might be slightly feminine for my uh, super manly van, so 
uh, I'm going to leave it two shakes per pot and then I'm going to chuck in some Temptations. But this is super cool. If my phone wasn't up there, I'd be taking pictures of this for Instagram. Um, but um, actually, I might get. Hey, Molly, you got your phone on you? Yeah. You come take some pictures of this. Yeah. And then I'll put them on Instagram. Check it out at Motoring Home. Do you reckon you can get? Can you see that swirl in there? Just like take, stand away from the light. Can you see that? Yeah. Cool. Well done. Perfect. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Can you just walk this way down? Say hi. Just say hi. Just pop in and say hi. Everyone knows you from the other videos if they've watched YouTube. It's my apprentice, Danny Boy. He's right there. He's like, go two steps that way down. Go on. Oh, bigger steps. Keep going. Keep going. There he is. It's Danny Boy. It's bottom of his head, top of his head. There you are. You'll get me more viewers, Dan. You're more interesting than I am. All right, two shakes. One. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, it was three, but the second shake didn't go as well. Give me a little. I'm probably overdoing it with the stirring and the mixing, but I don't want this thing to go wrong. There's a real danger that the sides are going to allow some resin out. They didn't on the bottom, and I really didn't want to drill into the really nice timber, because at one edge you'll see the end, and sand it up and treat it. But I had to pin some screws into that ply board on the edges, um, just to try and prevent it from spilling out. And I've got... Um, like no nonsense carpet protector uh, on there is like a backing so it should be okay to peel off. Right, okay, here we go. Let's get to the exciting um, powder. Stop messing around, get to the real deal. Enough of you. Tropical temptations. <laughs> I don't want to drop this stuff, this is, oh, let me show the camera. Look at that good stuff, beautiful. Again, I only need a tiny bit to make this how I want it to be. You will not believe how small a mic that is. Right. Can you see the amount I put in there? Probably not. Not much. Okay, let's see what happens. Put that there for reference. It's got a nice swirl in it. Um, I think I want to go just a tiny, tiny bit darker. Only a very small amount. Because unlike most people, mine's not going to be a standalone table, and so most people will peel off the backer board and light will get through, so they can do a lot darker of a pour to get the effect. Whereas mine's got wood underneath it, and so it's dark. But also, the wood's so pretty, I want you to be able to see the edges of the wood as my riverbanks. So, that's what I want, I think. That's a nice swirl. Okay. Let's get the other one done. Okay. Before I put 
Paul, uh, Paul, I'll come and check see if you guys have any comments or have asked any questions. I haven't been able to see the phone from here and see anything popping up, but it's the first time I've done a YouTube live feed, so I might be missing a bunch of stuff. It looks awesome in the light. Make sure I don't pour it on the floor, but that's what's going in on top of a little bit of a darker blue. So hopefully this doesn't stop you from seeing the, the bottom. Um, yeah, here we go. All right, we've got a couple of people online. The good stuff's about to start. We are about to get the pour going. Perfect, all right, here we go. Can you see, make sure we got everything good. That didn't work. Okay, all right, that's better. I think you can see what's going on. anymore. Might need that jug in the near future though because if I need to top it up at the end I'm going to have to do that last little bit that I left. The reason for that is if I do spill and does fall out on the edges I've got another litre that I can bang on. Uh, no, two litres, another two litres I can use to top up. So I'm just going to check the surface doesn't have any bits on it. Which it doesn't. All looks good. Right, we'll get rid of this mixer and then we'll pour it. Thanks for sticking around, by the way. I appreciate it. Not that I can see if anyone's online. <laughs> Here we go. Got my bin bag ready down there so I can just dispose of stuff. By the way, if you're going to do this yourself, which I highly recommend you do, because it's not very hard. Get yourself a bin bag ready to go. Okay. Second tub, first tub. Let's have a go, shall we? Scary stuff. And this epoxy is stuff. Oh, this is pretty. This is stuff you don't need to like use any special equipment with. Like some of the resins, you have to use a uh, blowtorch to get some um, heat over the surface to prevent bubbles. But this pretty much just looks after itself. Did you just say what was my name? Oh yeah, I have to log in. Molly's forgot her name, everyone. Ah, oh, I should have peeled this plastic back. That was a mistake. Right, I'll pull the rest of this out and I'll do that plastic before the next one. Getting pretty close to the surface. I'm glad I did two separate ones because then I can concentrate on this next one a little bit. Alright, so that we can just get rid of. And if you spill, like I spilled on the first ball here, don't worry about it, you're gonna eventually um, sand it all down anyway um, to get the surface nice and smooth so don't worry about it, chill oh, I don't want to have to cut the bit at the end off 
So I should have, I should have paid attention to this a little earlier. And now, uh, trusty standing up blade, save me. Sorry everyone, I know you were, we were just getting into that. That's not great, so I'm going to figure that. This one, however, is fine. So bear with me, and I will get to it. I'm just, this is important. Yeah, it might work. All right, one, two, okay. So we're getting close. I need to be very, very careful. Um, Oh, that was close. It's right on the edge, but it's going to spread, spread back. And there's already a meniscus forming. If you did your chemistry, GCSE, you should know what a meniscus is. Getting real close to the top, so I've got to be very careful. Um, and there's some spaces where I know it's going to run into, so I'm going to fill those spaces first. I might even go into some of the cracks as well in the timber, um, because even when I sand it down, it will expose. It will expose the good wood again after. So if I do the cracks.
This looks amazing. As you can't really see it, I'm after, I'll try and get the camera down afterwards. Starting to sneak over some of the edges it means we're real close to the height we want. Oh man, that's close. It's starting to get really hot. Close, very close. Alright, good, I think we made it. Um, it's just sneaking over all the edges, and some edges a little more than others, but that's good. It means uh, I'm going to get a completely flat layer uh, once I come to sand it down. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill in some of the cracks and gaps in the wood, so that when I sand the wood down, there's epoxy in there to stop any from falling. I mean, if you're using it as a kitchen prep area and stuff like that, although I use a chopping board, if any food stuffs will get in there, then it won't, it won't get into the bottom and, and rot away. At least that's the theory. All right, I think, I think I might leave it at that. There's a couple of cracks here I do. I will wipe them over at these ones afterwards because I'm gonna sand it down anyway, so. Um, but I just wanted to get like, resin into the cracks. see more content like this, um, get me to upload more videos because people keep asking when the next motorhome video is coming out. Well, go over there, I'm not asking you for money or anything, just go check out the site, see what you think, see if it's worth it. Because um, I'm going to do this stuff anyway, you'll just get it quicker and some like exclusive stuff.
but I won't be putting that. Mostly me failing. All oh, right. Almost. Right, because I don't want big lumps of epoxy sticking up, I'm just going to dab these, but I'm going nowhere near the river. I'm going to oil the wood afterwards too, so there's no danger of, of it going bad. I think that's a technical term. Right. Um, cool. Right folks, I think that's it. I'm going to show you the pour, but there is a very, very good chance that the Wi-Fi is going to cut out. So I'll try and do it quick. You might see it, you might not. Hopefully you can. Um, this thing looks sick. Right, come here. Oh, there are two people still watching. Hey, you know what? Thank you so much, you guys, for sticking around. I have no idea who you are. Um, no, it won't show me. Okay, I'm going to turn this guy around. All right. I think you might be upside down. Look at that. Beautiful. You see a reflection of something in there. I don't know. What do you think, Lou? <laughs> cool. Right, there you are, guys. I think I'm going to finish it there. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out Instagram. Maybe reconnected. Yeah, I'll show you soon the sanding and the oiling of that to see it finished. Now, Oh, we've got some, I had some questions. I don't know if they came through. Something about retaining the clarity. I don't know, I just, um, I bought some really decent resin from a place called Easy Composites. Um, it wasn't cheap. I mean, it, it definitely wasn't the most expensive on Tinternet, but there you go. Um, if there was comments, I, this is the first time I've used, uh, used live. So if those comments pop up that you were asking throughout, because they disappear straight off my screen and I'm too far away to see it. So if those comments come up on the video I upload, I'll answer them for sure. But uh, yeah, we've actually just got another person. You got another person just now. Um, so let's show them the river. There you go. Flat. So the wood's gonna have a similar color to the wood that's covered with the epoxy right now. Um, but that it. There's the epoxy uh, resin river table pour. Circa 2018. Justin, the hammer. There we go. Thanks, guys.